Welcome back to Edward Grable Studios. We're here at Sam Buford, Food Working Institute for another amazing week. That yellow I got from Joanne, and I don't know what that is. I was sure it might be like, um... How hard is it? It's pretty hard, pretty dumb. I'm not sure what it is. That could be Osage orange. She bought a board, and uh, we cut it up and used that. This right here is Babinga. Yeah. And then Purple Heart. Brave man using Babinga for a cutting board. Yeah, pretty sweet, huh? different than the bearing guide that we had, right? Remember, you would cut those walls and saw it out, and then it would hit the, the, our pin wall. Well, now we can't cut all the way through, so we can't hog any of that material. What I, what I have right here is, you know, Eric has his it taped up, he marked it with his tails, and then he cut his curves, his 45 degree cuts. So that's where you have to be at for this point. Then, and the only other difference with this jig is I don't have um, wing nuts for this, so it's a little more annoying to set it, but it is what it is. So, uh, and then with this, it looks a little unusual with little pieces, pieces of wood. This could be a piece of plywood, this could be anything. This needs to be flat on this edge here. And first what Eric did was set the depth of cut. So now instead of only having one wall, which was our, bot, our end grain wall, we also have a long grain wall, right, right back here with the blue tape. So we need to hit this wall and that back wall. And you can get really close with this and establish those walls clean and have really little chisel work to do. So there's one more step where you clamp a random piece of wood on here. We find the widest point of our bit and I'll measure here from the back, from my face here to my blue tape. Looks like I'm at about nine sixteenths approximately. Really like eight and a half. And that looks good. So yeah, when I'm measuring, I'm measuring from that piece of wood to the outside of my bit, and then the depth has already been set because I just need to hold it up and get this down right here and make sure it's hitting my line down here, right? So there's again a risk reward to this because it's really consistent, really easy. The, this piece of wood stopping me from blowing through and make, not making it a half one anymore, but I have, there's no bearing there. So you can cut right into your pin. So you which can, would be bad. Which would be bad. So, uh, because this is what everyone's looking at when you're opening that door. So uh, you'll have a little bit of chisel work here and here. And a little bit, you know, this is still going to create a radius in your corner. You can't get tight in that corner. That's what you need a chisel for uh, to do. But it helps establish those walls and make it pretty quick work. Now these bits are really thin, and uh, they can break if you put too much uh, pressure on them. If you guys heard that that high pitched squeal, that was Eric routing, you know, nearly correctly, but it was just a little taking a little too much off that one. So still want that you know we sort of know what the router is supposed to sound like when, it, when it's cutting it and this takes time the setup is kind of annoying but once you're set up and if you've marked all your half points at the same time you know the same measurements well once this is set up it'll do all your door so you can 
can become very quick, right? So you just, you gotta get your blue tape on, you cut your turfs, then you come to the stake and you're ready to, to uh, start cutting it with the router. Drilling the holes oh, made it a lot quicker too. Yeah, so Ma yeah, Mondo has, some of you have really hard wood, right? Um, and <laughs> really, really hard wood. So he bored a couple holes at the drill press where he stopped before coming through again. And then that way, when you're cutting through it, just made some relief cuts. So I'll come and do the middle. And you can get your face guard on if you need to. Did you have a hard time with uh, catching the holes and the bit jumping around on you? A little bit. I mean, just any, even a few holes up the yeah. bit. Yeah. I mean, that, that bit was Alrighty. But first I'm gonna bop it in just to make sure I'm happy. So it looks like Eric, you're a little below this. Is this the line you wanna be at? First line, yeah. Okay. That's okay. So I'm gonna move it up just a little bit. Sharp, sharp, and mm -hmm. we're happy. So, uh, cool little clever. Same idea, just a couple more things to think about with this, and we'll leave this station set up. Eric, you're in the zone, so you're gonna get all yours done real quick. Get in the zone. Uh, cool. Any questions? Excellent. If you get this little uh, set set up, you get a little piece of sacrificial, whatever it's called, on here. You get it in a second. We can. Uh, mics here to see if it would help improve the sound quality at all oh, my clip on and I got the media mod here so we'll see if the sound improves at all with the air on well, hopefully sure it will. does yeah. lots of noises going in the wood shop <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to cut the dovetails on my drawer sides. Coming along nicely, Zach. Slowly, for sure. That's how it rolls. Yep. You do these by hand? Yeah. Nice. Doing my my machine. Zion, hear me! It is true what many of you have heard. The machines. Smarter shots. Come here, come here. Yes, sir. I like how you're utilizing your box here. Hey, use the box to make the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 